Hey, what's going on guys? It's Adam. I hope you're well. And today we're going to be talking about how do you create crystal clarity in your big vision for life? I'm going to be showing you some of the obstacles I see people facing. We're going to be talking about some potential solutions. And then I'm going to give you a framework that I've developed to bridge that gap between where you are now, which is probably stuck, confused, overwhelmed, conflicted, to getting the clarity that you're looking for so you can start implementing it in your life right now. And so if you're listening to me, follow my voice. If you're on the YouTube channel, you can watch my screen. But why is clarity so important? Most people walk around thinking that they're lazy, unmotivated, undisciplined, when in reality that couldn't be farther from the truth. What you think is a lack of motivation is really a lack of clarity. Because when I think of clarity, clarity is really the rocket fuel that momentum, motivation, and success and action follow. Because once you have that North Star in place, everything else becomes illuminated. Once you know where you're going, you can't hit a target that you can't see. Once that's in place, you know what to aim for. The example I always give is, imagine I told you you had to go start a business tomorrow. And in that business, you need to make a million dollars and it had to be in the next month. Well, you would probably be completely overwhelmed, confused, because there's a million ways to create a million different businesses that make a million dollars. But what if I told you that that business needed to be in the storage unit space, it needed to be located in Detroit, Michigan, and you could only make money by selling monthly rentals? Well, with those parameters of clarity, it illuminates the next necessary steps. It gives you a frame of focus in order to guide you towards what you would need to do, and therefore it helps clarify you. And so that's what clarity is. It's framing our focus towards the target that we want to hit and helps guide us so that motivation and momentum follow. That's why it's so important. So it's not a character flaw that you're broken. It's a design flaw in that you're missing a very critical step. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to say about clarity is when we talk about getting clear, clarity in itself is not a means to an end. Or clarity in itself is not an end. It's a means to an end. When you say you want clarity, when I say I want clarity, it's not that clarity in itself is good. It's what clarity does for us. Because everything you do is an attempt to make you feel a certain way. And we'll talk about that later today. But everything you do is an attempt to make you feel a certain way. So I want you to imagine that I just infused you with an infinite amount of clarity. You had all the clarity in the world. What would that do for you? Well, I can imagine that would give you some sense of peace, some sense of confidence, laser-like focus, and motivation. So when we talk about getting clarity, what we're really talking about is getting what clarity gives us access to, which is um, certainty, um, focus, motivation, all those different things. So clarity is not a means within itself. It's a means to an end of how we want to feel. And that's why we want to get the clarity. Now, when I think about deconstructing clarity, it really has three main components. Clarity is specific. It is designed and it is aligned. When I say specific, there's a very clear what. When I say it's designed, there's a very clear how. And when it's aligned, there's a very clear why. And the why is probably the most important that we're gonna talk about today. So clarity has those three components. And when you put all those things together, you can get a lot of clarity in your life, okay? So now we know a little bit about why clarity is so important and what it is. Again, the thing is never the thing. It's always about what you're hoping to get by getting it. And that's what we're looking for with clarity. What am I hoping to achieve with clarity, which is that specificity, confidence and motivation. Now, let me talk about some obstacles that I see a lot of people face when they talk about getting clarity. I've talked, I've coached over 500 plus people and almost everybody has an issue when I ask them, what do you want? They say, I don't know what I want. I'm confused, I'm overwhelmed, there's so many options, I have no idea what I want. And although I believe them in the sense that they consciously don't know what they want, um, the reality is, is they're probably judging what they want. Judgment is the biggest obstacle that I see getting in the way of you actually getting clear on what you want. And judgment shows up in two ways. The first way judgment shows up is if we're being honest with ourselves um, and we let ourselves play really big, um, we probably know what we want. If there was no barriers in place and I just let you live and imagine your biggest life possible, you could probably tell me what you want. But alongside that is all these judgments about that's bad, it's selfish for wanting that, that's gonna hurt other people. For example, I was coaching this woman and she really wanted to find her partner. And she felt like she really needed a nose job in order to make herself look aesthetically more pleasing, make her feel more confident and beautiful so she would get the connection she was looking for. Well, she would judge herself and say, well, that's really superficial, that's really fake, I'm upset that this is the thing that I want. And the reality is, is that when you judge yourself for the bigness of 
what you actually want. You lose it on the juice of what actually happens when you let yourself play big, which is the nose job isn't really the thing that she was after, but the way the nose job would make her feel. And if she doesn't let herself play big in regards to letting herself feel what it would be like to have that nose job, she misses out on what she was hoping to access. Because again, everything we do is an attempt to make us feel a certain way. So I asked her, if you got that nose job, what would that do for you? Oh my God, my confidence would be off the charts. Oh my God, I would feel so much more peaceful and secure and own who I was. And that is the juice. That is the thing. That is what we're looking for when we talk about clarity. How is this thing going to make me feel? And so when we minimize and judge ourselves for playing it big, we lose out on that secret sauce of what we actually want. You might not actually want a nose job or the big fancy corner office or all the money in the world. But if you minimize the the, the um, desires of what you have, you miss out on what you really want so that you can reverse it, engineer it in a sustainable way. For example, I've always wanted to be the next Tony Robbins. I've always wanted to be on stage and impacting millions of people and doing that. But I would judge myself for it because I felt like that was selfish or that was wrong to want that or I'd hurt other people by owning that. But what I didn't realize is that by minimizing that desire that I have, I missed out on what I actually wanted, which when I let myself play really, really big and say, I am going to be the next Tony Robbins, what that really means is I want to be an expert in my field. What that really means is I want to own my craft. I really want to be a master of communication because that is going to help give me access to more joy, excitement, and help me feel more worthy in regards to serving other people, um, playing it bigger to who I can serve, and then getting more in return for serving more people. And so when you judge yourself for what you want, it probably clouds your ability to get clarity because the thing is not the thing. What you want is an attempt to make you feel a certain way, but if you diminish what you want, you'll never get to the core source of what you're actually hoping to feel by getting that. I hope that makes sense. The second place I see judgment coming up is with self-doubt. So people say, oh, I want this really big life, but I doubt that it's possible. Or these, there are these external factors that are getting in the way, like money or who I was in the past or my upbringing. And so that self-doubt is critical because most people who are trying to own the bigness of what they want are playing from a version of them in the past. Most people think that this is the reason psychology is so important. Your mental frame and psychological frame determine what you see and how you interpret what you see. And if you're trying to get clarity from the past, you will be limited in the sense that what you think, feel, and believe about yourself and the world around you will limit what you think is possible. And so it's really easy for me to say, hey, go have a mediocre relationship. It's really easy for me to say, hey, go get an average job. But if your bigness is wanting to have the best relationship or to have an amazing, high-paying, successful job, um, that requires a different psychological frame. And so most people think they need to operate from the past in order to create the, their future, when in reality, you need to own the bigness of what you want and then reverse engineer the psychological frame, character, and identity that you'll need in order to go accomplish it. So when we talk about what blocks people from really getting clear on their um, life, the judgment of the bigness of what they wanna live in the sense of um, what I want is bad, or I doubt my ability to get it because both of those things are feeding from a psychological framework that is from the past instead of creating the future of what you want so that you can backfill and reverse engineer how to get there, okay? I hope that makes sense. Um, let's talk a little bit now that we've talked about the obstacles in regards to what is the roadmap that I've created to help people get the ultimate amount of clarity. So there's three major components, okay? If what we want at the end of the day is massive amounts of clarity, there's three things that we need to know. First and foremost, we need to know the game that we're playing. When I talk about knowing the game that we're playing, imagine that I gave you a chess set, but the rules to Tetris. You would feel like you're bad at the game, you would have no idea what's going on and never feel successful. A lot of us are playing the wrong game. A lot of us are playing this game of extrinsic things, hoping that something out there is gonna make me feel a certain way and then I'll be happy. But from experience, we probably all know that um, you go after the thing that you think is gonna make you happy, you get it, Maybe it's the corner office, maybe it's a raise, but then you realize you have less time than ever, you never get to see your family, and then you've built a life around you that's completely unfulfilling, and the thing that you were hoping would make you feel good didn't make you feel that way at all. If you're playing the wrong game, you're making random stabs in the dark, and you end up unfulfilled and unsuccessful. 
The real game that we're playing is not an extrinsic game, but an intrinsic game. Everything you do in life is to make you feel a certain way. And the game that we're playing is amplifying the internal states of how we want to feel. And once we understand the game that we're playing, then we can play the game well and actually get good at it. And so again, the game that we're actually playing is magnifying all the internal states that we want to feel. And the way I think about it is like a compass. A compass points you in the right direction, north, south, east, and west. You need to create a compass for your own life, which is the feelings that you want to feel, which is joy, excitement, love, peace. Once you have the compass in mind about the game that you're playing, once you know the game you're playing and you have the compass that's guiding you, almost everything else falls into place. For example, if I told you that you need to live the most exciting life possible and that was important to you, working seven to seven at a desk job is probably not gonna be the thing for you. If I told you or you decided that you wanna have the most amount of peace and joy in your intimate relationships, well, dating that crazy hairdresser or that emotionally unavailable gym bro is probably not gonna give you the thing that you want and it becomes a really clear um, uh, focus for you about what is included in that game and what isn't included in that game. And so the very first step in this is knowing the game that you're playing. Intrinsic versus extrinsic. Um, and if the whole game of life is getting or magnifying the feelings and internal states that you want to feel, you better be sure to understand what are the things that you want to feel. Okay. Moving along, the next component of getting mass amounts of clarity once we know the game that we're playing is building the map. What is the map? The map, the way I think about it, is the levers that you get to pull in life to amplify the experiences that you want to experience. Now, the problem with a lot of people's maps is they're infinite. There's so many options. There's a million ways to skin um, a cat. If I said I need to get from L.A. to New York, there's a million different ways I could go, right? So what we need is we need to simplify the map and get really clear on what those simplistic categories are and then maximize the levers that we get to pull on so we can amplify those feelings. And the way I do that is through the big three. The big three is a concept from my mentor, Brian Johnson, and the big three is the most radically simple way of looking at life. It's categorizing it into your energy, which is your mental and physical health, your work, which is your value that you bring to the world, where by you giving people what they want, you get what you want in return, and then your love, which is your intimate, romantic, um, but also platonic, friendship, community, spiritual, something bigger than you. So when you're looking at these three lenses of life, that's the map that you get to build to maximize the game that you're playing. So for example, if we took a look at your mental and physical health, if we were doing a roadmap session together, um, I would say, how do you wanna amplify excitement in your mental and physical health? Well, for me, what makes me feel more excited and more zesty and more expansive is running. I love running. And so I know that running makes me feel a certain way, so if I run, I'll get what I wanna feel. So I have a very strict map roadmap on how I'm going to run. I run five, six days a week and it makes me feel amazing. For you, that might be totally different. Maybe that's walking. Maybe that's doing some type of sport, right? When we go down to work, let's say, okay, I want to maximize the amount of joy I feel at work. Well, for me, I never wanted to start a business. I never had it on my roadmap. But when I use this compass to signal in on what I wanted to feel, I know that I love people and I want to work and guide and mentor people. So one-on-one -on -one coaching almost became an immediate aha once I got really clear on what I actually wanted and how I could amplify it. When we get down to the category of love, let's say I want to have the deepest, most fulfilling, connected, loving relationship with my partner, Nico. Well, I know that for me, uninterrupted time together is the place that I feel the most deep connection, whether that's silly little guy time late at night where we just get to giggle and laugh our heads off or having date night. And so once I maximized and got clear on optimizing deep states of love, the pathway almost became clear because I know what's included in that category and what's not. So uninterrupted time became a very clear staple in my roadmap to how I'm going to access more love and get the fulfillment and success in my relationship that I'm looking for. Now, once we know the game, once we've built the map, we get to move on to the third step, which is create the character. And this might, on top of knowing the game, which is really, really important, creating the character is almost equally as important. Because like I was talking about earlier, most people are creating their lives from a past version of themselves. They're trying to be somebody new while staying the same. And that doesn't work. Because what you want to achieve in life most likely 
requires you to become somebody different, change the way you see yourself uh, and the world around you. And so when we talk about creating a character, if you've ever played a video game, you know that once you know the mission, once you know the path, you get to create your character. You get to pick your skins, your weapons, your potions. If you're gonna be a warlock, if you're gonna be a wizard, you need to create a character that's best designed to navigate the map to win the game. And that's what we need to do in the game of life, only you are that character. And the way we create that character is through what Ben Hardy calls the three Fs. We create this character through, first and foremost, our frame. Our frame is our psychological frame. It's the way we see ourselves in the world around us. Don't limit yourself on what you think is possible based on what you've done in the past. Update it from where you see yourself going. Who do I need to be? Who would I need to be in order to start my own business? Who would I need to be in order to develop an amazing intimate relationship? Because once you understand that everything is pliable, everything is figure outable, um, who you are is not fixed, it's not permanent. In fact, you'll change drastically over the next 20, 30 years. You have the ability to change who you are in order to fit the map to win the game, okay? So updating your frame is critical. The next thing you need to do is you need to identify your floor or change your floor. Your floor is your standards. It's what you repeatedly do. You are not what you do at your best. You're what you do at your worst. And if at your worst, you're working out one day a week, that is your floor. That is the life that you are actively creating. And so in order to um, play the game well and follow the map, you need to update your standards about what you do consistently. And then the third part of this is the focus. Okay. Focus on what is that 20% of things that are giving me the 80% of the results, separating the signal from the noise. Where focus goes, energy flows. And the reality is if you know the game that you're playing, you have a map that's gonna get you there, then you get to focus on the most high level, high tier um, activities that are gonna help amplify those experiences. And by creating a character that's best suited for the map and the game that you're playing, you get to flow through that. For example, in my intimate relationship, I know spending time on our phones is not gonna amplify love. So I get to focus on the very key few uninterrupted moments that we have together at the dinner table, when I walk through the door after work, and when we spend time together um, after the dogs are tucked in and we have a couple minutes alone. Those are the key places that I'm focusing to amplify love, knowing that those are the most critical components of my day. And so taking a big step back in regards to what we talked about today, how do you get massive amounts of clarity? Well, you need to understand that clarity is the rocket fuel that's gonna help you go from where you are to where you wanna be. Because what is a lack of motivation is really a lack of clarity. So you need to understand that component. What gets in the way of clarity is the judgments. The judgments you have about what you actually want. Because the thing is not the th- the thing is never the thing. It's always an attempt to make you feel a certain way. And so when you let yourself play big and expansively, you can start understanding what is the thing that you're actually after. And then once you understand those key components, you get to play the framework that we talked about of knowing the game you're playing, which is amplifying internal experiences, building a map by simplifying it to the big three, and then creating the character that's best suited to build, uh, to follow the map and win the game. All right. So I hope this was useful for you guys. I hope you can go and implement it into your own lives and I'll see you on the next episode.